by Hellblitz. Five, six oh, it must be off a card. Good evening and welcome to the March 3rd meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the board. To my far left, Selectman Mike Pierce. To my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Clough. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey. To my immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch, and I'm Chairman Dick Nichols. The first item on the agenda tonight is public comment. Would anybody from the public wish to comment? <laughs> I only see that one bashful gentleman out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's two gentlemen out there. But only one of them is bashful. <laughs> only one is bashful, okay. I everybody stayed home. I thought it was going to snow. <laughs> Art Moody? Let's see. Mm. I don't know if it was this meeting last week or uh, the Selectman's candidate Friday night for the Hampton Union, but somebody said that there were 33 miles of town roads. All I can tell you is 25 years ago there were 69 miles, and I imagine with all the subdivision there's probably 100 by now. <coughs> also at that uh, Selectman's candidate night. Uh, the six candidates for two slots for three years. It took the last person to say what I would have said about <coughs> an answer to the question about the empty two lots, Old Town Office and the Courthouse. <coughs> and, and the last answer of uh, Selectman Pierce was open space. Yes. What's wrong with open space? My last subject is something that came up beginning of last month. The fire chief's car, 2000 Ford Taurus SE, <coughs> which is registered for another year. Uh, chief asked, or the manager asked, that it be declared a surplus, and you did, and a week later, he asked that it not be put out to bid for auction <coughs> because he didn't want to endanger the public because it's all rotted out. Well, we've been having those auctions for 50 years and it's always been as is, where is. And I think some taxpayer that might have helped pay for that might want to fix that up. <coughs> I bid on a fire chief's car. <coughs> of course, they've been upgraded since. <laughs> now the status symbol is SUVs <coughs> rather than that Taurus uh, 2000 midsize sedan. I bid back in the 70s when they put it out to bid. <coughs> and there was just one other bidder, an employee of the fire department. But I had a higher bid. <coughs> Selectman Helen Hayden wanted to welch on the deal, <coughs> wanted to cancel it after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering about how close to the fire department this car will, la uh, will land. <coughs> uh, the manager last time or time before that said that he was going to go to a junk dealer a junkyard with it. Well, we outlawed junkyards in this town by zoning every district. So it'll be out of town. And we just two years ago, you put the surplus town property on the uh, ordinance on the town ballot in which the certification there's no value has to be made by two town officials before it's disposed of. And I didn't see any paperwork or heard any, of any heard about any paperwork when you voted five to nothing to rub a stamp, give it to a junk or sell it to a junk dealer. So I just like to put in a bid for <laughs> fact that taxpayers paid for that and that you should follow that ordinance that passed like 2,600 to five or 600 
two years ago. And that's my statement for tonight. How much you're willing to bid? <laughs> <laughs> um, just a point of clarification to Arthur's point about the 33 miles. That was, in fact, um, at the candidates thing as opposed to the selectmen's yeah. meeting. And I believe we've got the right guy here. There's 77 miles of town maintained roads. And then when on top of that, you factor in the urban compact and the state mm -hmm. roads. I believe Ed knows this from the right of way stuff that it rises to about 100 miles of roads. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Correct. Um, announcements and community calendar. Mike? Uh, yes, I have one, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. March 11 is approaching soon. You have an opportunity to change the whole direction of the town of Hampton if you so choose. And I think you're passing by an opportunity to go out and register your vote if, if you don't feel like you want to take the time or have some other reason. I think now is the time for people to really start paying attention to what's going on in Hampton. This vote could be very, very, very serious and have repercussions for a long time in the future. So I suggest you get out and vote. Express your feelings and let everybody know how, I mean, not let everybody know, but go to the end of the ballot and vote for the people you want to vote for. Thank you. Uh, Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Hampton uh, Chamber of Commerce did their awards night Friday at the Ashworth. It was a great time, well produced, and uh, there were some great awards winners. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mike? Just March 11th is approaching fast. Please come out tomorrow. Vote. Yeah. Mary Louise? I have a couple of things. Uh, in light of what Mr. Pierce just said, is it change for the sake of change or change <coughs> to do something beneficial? Change isn't always a magic word. Um, number two, I understand that the yellow sheet is out with uh, a, um, uh, an incorrect uh, statement to the voters regarding the uh, money for the lights at Eaton Field. The uh, money for the lights at Eaton Field will not impact the taxpayers, will not impact the taxpayers. That is money that is in the <coughs> recreation fund derived from parking revenues. That is not going to affect your tax rate. That should have been uh, more clear. Uh, next, I noticed someone, I think it was at the uh, candidates tonight, who said something about the um, the, the wonderful money that the state of New Hampshire has sunk into the town of Hampton, the 14, 15 million dollars that the uh, state paid at the beach for the seashell and the other construction was to benefit the state of New Hampshire. It wasn't just to benefit the town of Hampton. That was for, for the state. So they're not exactly being a fairy godmother for us. And my last comment relates to articles on the warrant. You will find three planning board articles on that warrant that are uh, very, will be very detrimental to the public if they're voted in. Article three, which is the height, keep in mind that the 70 foot height is just a starting point. A starting point. Any developer has the right to go to the zoning board to ask for a variance. So it's 70 feet on up and take your pick. That, that could be a serious problem in the future. Article 4, releases, setback requirements, etc. for the whole beach area, not just for the A block, where they're talking about the building. And Article 5, the, the downtown Route 1 redistricting, has more flaws than you can shake a stick at. That's a very dangerous article. So I'm asking all of you to think before you vote. Call any of us and ask questions if you have questions. And please get out to vote March 11th. Okay. No appointments tonight. Town manager. Come in if I may. If people want to call about Article 5, they can always call me. Okay. I might have a different view. Okay. Town manager report. Fred? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, it's that time of the year that all dog lovers know well. <laughs> it's time to license your dog prior to April 30th, 2014. Hopefully that will happen and uh, we won't have a long list this year of people who have uh, accidentally forgotten to do that. Uh, please remember to vote on Tuesday, March 11, 2014. If you're unable to come to the polls that day to cast your ballot, please contact the town's er town clerk's office now for the requirements to obtain an absentee ballot.
You have to do that in advance. For those residents who are, who are or may be eligible for a veterans, elderly, blind, or other type of tax exemption or credit, please call the town assessor's office now for information, forms, and other required materials in order to apply. Work continues at full speed on the completion of the Church Street pumping station, and they are making fabulous progress. We again request that those who have not signed up for the emergency notification uh, from the town to do so. Forms are available on the counter in the town office or may be obtained online. I've moved them to a more prominent location so people should be able to see them better when they come in through the door. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I've given you a couple of things that came in uh, just for your attention if you want to bring them up later, uh, dealing with the Air Force Base and, and uh, I, there was, I think there was one other thing there. But that's did, it. Did you want to bring them up now, Fred? Or? Uh, actually, I gave them to you because I wanted you to review them before <laughs> I did. <laughs> this was in this pile here. <clears throat> is, is there anything here that can't be deferred to next week's agenda? Or? No, just the uh, proposal for the uh, the Air National Guard. They're yes, looking right. for a letter from us. Yes. Um, they're holding a hearing sometime this week. Mm -hmm. I think it's Thursday. Portsmouth. Yeah. Yes. I will so move actually to ask the manager to draft a letter of support in behalf of this board. I'll second that. Any uh, further discussion? Well, they were in the summer to right. explain yeah. what they were yes. going to do. Right. Yeah. Right. And we were all in favor of it. Right. Then. I think yeah. we should I agree. support it. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I, I think the Portsmouth thing is, it sounded like essentially the same thing right. that Absolutely. they did with us or yes. whatever. So, yeah. okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Very good. Okay. Take care of that. Uh, anything else, Fred? No, uh, sir, that's it. Okay, questions for Fred? Or? Um, I have one, sir. and I mentioned this to you in, in an email today. Um, back at the time of the um, budget review of the building department, there was discussion of, of reevaluating the fees and mm -hmm. changing the fees, and we actually talked about doing that um, by January 1st, and I am just kind of flew off of my radar and whatever, and just right. following up on that. Or I know I talked to Kevin today about it again, and, and uh, he has finished his compilation at the end of the year, oh. his expenses and everything that went along with that. And uh, he actually showed a slight profit of about uh, $18,000 this year wow. in the building department Good. over his over his appropriated budget. So he doesn't feel as a need at the moment, but I've asked him to go back and review that and take out the average for the last five years. I've also asked him to include... Um, get us an average of what the the cost of equipment <coughs> replacement would be. Uh, for instance, if pickup trucks are replaced, uh, he has two of them right. on a five-year basis. Right. What would that be annually? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that should be included in those figures so that we understand what the total cost is over a period of time. Copier. And and asked, uh, actually, the copy is shared with three departments. Oh. So, uh, but that would be part of his budget anyhow. Yeah. So uh, he said he would do that, and he would get that to us just as quickly as possible. Good. So okay. we'd have a full picture of what's going on. Excellent. Okay. Old business. First item on there is, is the question of retiring the Heritage Commission. And just a <coughs> little bit of background, just a refresh. I think it was probably um, several months ago when, when Sue Irwin, who had been yeah. a member of the commission and the chairman, whatever, submitted her resignation, I believe both as chairman and as a member of the commission, and it was her recommendation that, that we um, consider retiring um, the commission and essentially that there wasn't a heck of a lot, you know, for them to do was, was the gist of it. Fred had sent out a letter to the remaining um, commission members probably three or four weeks ago. Uh, February 5th. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. wasn't that quite that some long ago. And we've had some level of feedback, and maybe, Fred, you could summarize some of the feedback that we've had. Um, that Actually, I, I think it's not all, everybody has responded to that, that request, mm -hmm. uh, but everybody who has responded has said yes, they think it's time. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, and, and I did have a chance to sit down with uh, Roger Cyphers, who actually came in the office and we, we chatted for about 15 minutes. Um, he was concerned with only one thing, and that is if the commission goes out of existence, who's going to take responsibility for watching and maintaining uh, the four buildings that they currently they currently supervise. You've got the fish houses down the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have the mill, and I think we're all, we all know everybody's working on that yeah. one, so that's pretty well in, in, the, in the limelight. The grist right. mill. Yeah. And then you have the two buildings located up at the community gardens, yeah. the old blacksmith shop and the, the old uh, barrel shop. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and we've just finished inspecting those, so they're mm -hmm. in they're in relatively good shape. And I, I think that's a good question. Um, if you decide uh, to go to next year's town meeting and discontinue this commission, uh, we need to have some mechanism in place so that someone will watch those and give reports to this board on a regular basis about what's going on in their condition and what needs to happen in the future with the buildings. Okay, so what, what I just picked up on in, in your comments, which I hadn't before, you're indicating that in order to um, retire that commission, we require a vote of town meeting? That's my understanding. This was a, c a commission created by town meeting. I think it has to be ab mm -hmm. absolved by town meeting. Okay. Well, that being the case, then there's really nothing to do. Um, Except maybe plan. At this point in time. Phil, Phil you've been the representative to that for a couple of years. Do you have any comments? or? Uh, it, it, it seems to be um, dying for lack of uh, mm -hmm. interest in the uh, participation. And uh, um, I'm happy to move along with that current. So it's basically between now and whenever next December in a warrant article, right. try and you know um, mm -hmm. make sure that we understand all the things that need to be right. done and whatever. So I do okay. have a question along that line. You mentioned the sure. fish houses. Yes, I was down there today at Bruce Timpson Park, as I mentioned to Phil. Um, as I recall, the gentleman has the Rainbow Surf Shop or whatever it's called. Yes, he wanted to originally put his shop in there or something like that, and that got kiboshed. Well, there's all kinds of surfboards and everything over there on the, in the, next to the fish house. And I don't know if that's proper or not. It doesn't look proper to me, but I, I thought I'd ask you. And if the Heritage Commission is one of the people who's going to look after it, I have a concern in that respect that somebody's going to have to keep an eye on the place, if for no other reason, to make sure it doesn't fall apart due to the weather and so forth. Like the Roos Stimson Park, there's nobody watching after that either. Seriously. I'll have to uh, go back and look. There was a discussion on that, uh -huh. and there was some agreement reached on what could be done at the fish house, uh -huh. and that was uh, something that was put in town meeting, and it was voted by the town. So I'll go back and look at that and see what actually can be done on that particular one that he still owns. So it's one of the two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. One we own, one he owns. Right. Mm -hmm. When he passes away, that, that the one he owns comes to the town, is my yeah. understanding. Now, I remember that. You know, that was caused a little bit of excitement back, what, three or four or five years ago? Yes. And, but I didn't remember anything about being able to store his mm -hmm. equipment, merchandise, whatever, on the grounds. I thought it was supposed to be inside. I thought, I thought so, too. So, I All mean, right. it's, we it's, might want to look into that uh, part of it. It's a while ago, so I think I want to go back and read it before I, I mm -hmm. say okay. anything. No problem. No problem. Thank you. But I will. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Chairman, will you accept the motion that we place on the list for next year's warrant the possible inclusion of an article to discontinue the Heritage Commission? Sure. Somebody want to second that? I'll second it, but I would like to open it up for discussion, if I may. If, if we have these three or four items, these three or four items that seem to need some attention yes. or some of watching, can we relegate, delegate that to some other committee, like the hysterical committee or one of those? You shouldn't need a committee, Michael. The town should be able to. Well, find but a way to that's well, true, but things tend percent. to slip off the table when Perhaps nobody's should paying go to attention. The building inspector. Yeah. If he's the one that went up to the Victory Garden and looked at those buildings. Yeah. I think that uh, we need to. Um, we need to review what their responsibilities yeah. are, mm -hmm. yeah. and we need to find a place to place those responsibilities right. with some guidance and parameters mm -hmm. so there's a responsibility directly back to the board if you're going to right. discontinue right. the commission. Right. right. Maybe you have the building department, like you said, keep an eye on them, and if there's a problem or whatever, then the selectmen have to We have a good nine months to resolve that, yeah. eight months. Quarterly inspections or whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. I'm ne voting. Next item under. Oh, voting? sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Unanimous. First time I remember us putting a Warren article on the burner. In, yeah, exactly. Before the new town meeting. <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, no opposition to it, but maybe a little lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> um, next item on the agenda abatement request from Sustainable Ales LLC related to a land use uh, change tax. Mark, Ed? Good evening, evening. Gentlemen. evening. You were presented with uh, the response, the abatement response for land use change tax penalty yeah. for uh, 105 Toll Farm Road, yeah. 
the Sustainable Ales property. Um, if you had to answer any questions and, um, s you know, submitted it for your approval, hopefully, and if you have any questions. Maybe a little um, background information for the, 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 the benefit of the public, just explaining what a, what a land use tax change is, the 10 percent factor, what the amount of the tax actually was, and oh. so I think would be appropriate. Okay. Um, the, the property, um, prior to getting approvals to develop the brewery site, um, consisted of, uh, it, the, the entire site consists of 14 acres. However, one acre was always out of current use, which was the <coughs> original farmhouse that was on site. Um, as part of the development, um, the, the site became, was, was to become a four acre developed area, including the brewery, relocation of the farmhouse into a restaurant, and some other things, parking and drainage and all that. So the, the process of the land use change tax was to take those three acres in current use, remove them, and assign a fair market value to those relative to the date of change. Uh, the date of change um, is when, when change happens on the, the land area, um, and there's some uh, kind of things in th within the RSA that allow you to, uh, in a larger development, wait for substantial completion or the uh, pulling of the majority of the permits or all the permits before doing that. Um, in this case, that, uh, that was the case with this property. We waited um, approximately two years for, from start to finish, to apply that land use change tax or determine the fair market value for those three acres. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that was the basis of a land use change tax, which resulted in a value for those three acres of approximately $1.3 million, or uh, a little under 400, or a little over $440,000 an acre. Um, that 10% is what the penalty would be it's based on that fair market value. Therefore, the land use change tax penalty was approximately $132,000. And that 10% factor is a matter of state statute mm -hmm. um, right. that, yeah. that we're applying. Correct. Um, the current use, of course, is that category of taxation that when property is in an open space type arrangement, mm -hmm. it's taxed at a much lower value, right. provided that you have 10 acres. Right. Yeah. And if at some point you end up developing what is in current use, then it, it, it comes out of current use. And at th that's what Ed's the trying to calculate. And, and when you say at a much lower value mark, that, that much lo lower value is almost no tax. Um, very, very could, low. It could be below $100, and $100 an acre for wooded, wooded land. Right, so something yep. may be taxed at $100 sure. an acre that when brought back in may have a market value of a hundred, two hundred, whatever thousand dollars an acre. Correct. Right. And um, the penalty Ed's referring to is not only do you end up being taxed at the fair market value when it comes out of land use change tax, but there's also a ten percent penalty for taking it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Board have any comments or questions or is there a motion or whatever? I uh uh, is it appropriate to move to support the assessor's position regarding the response to the uh, <coughs> to the plaintiffs or yes, or uh, you would, would be moving to uh, to uh, uh, deny the abatement petition for the reasons set forth in the assessor's report. All right, I will so move. I will um, deny the abatement request. Second that. A um, little bit. I have. A um, little bit of further discussion, whatever. Um, question: This is based on a February 27th um, memo to the board um, from Ed Tinker. It's actually a six-page memo, and then there's a number of attachments. Um, following tonight's vote is, and maybe preceding it, is this particular document a public document, Mark? It uh, it can be. The document is addressed to both me and to the board, yep. and. Uh, I'd, I'd have no objection to it being public record. Right. Okay. And, and so because it's addressed um, to you, are you suggesting maybe that part of the motion ought to be to make this a public document or is that? Yes, that would okay. be fine. Do oh, you have good. any objection? I'd be happy to incorporate that. Okay. And I will second that so that's part of it. 
Any further questions or discussion or whatever? I, I think it should be sort of emphasized that when you pay this 10 percent penalty, it's because you had such a nice low rate and you took advantage of that, if right. you will, which is a smart thing to do. I'm not criticizing it. But you got a lower rate because you kept it in the current use mm -hmm. tax rate, which can be a significant amount of money if you're right next to a large development where your property would automatically raise in value significantly. So you're very smart in doing that, especially if you have a farm or something like that in New Hampshire. So I think that explaining that the 10 percent is because you had such a good deal for so long, it's really a deal. Yeah, right. absolutely. Because our slice it for the person yeah. who owns the property. Yeah. Uh, if he continues to own it, that is for sure. I don't know about when it changes, but that's up to everybody else involved. But I think that needs to be made very clear. That it's not really a penalty, as it is to sort of make up for the fact you had mm -hmm. a, a lower ride for a long time, mm -hmm. and now and you probably should have been at the higher rate ride probably that you asked for the special exemption and you got it as a yeah. farmer or landowner and now you're paying a little penalty for the fact that now you want to get market value for it. Yeah, it's, it's also, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say it's an encouragement too for open space exactly. and, and environmental mm -hmm. uses. Oh, absolutely. It's also the case that um, the way the planning board approved this development had it been fully built as approved, it would have taken all of the acreage out of current use because it would have reduced the current use acreage below 10. Uh, There's a, qualifica a further qualification, mm. uh, not only to leaving it open and natural, but having 10 acres worth. Right. Mm. Right. Good. The plan was revised. 10 acres. Yeah. May I, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Uh, Attorney Gerald, you yes. have uh, reviewed all of the documentation. You've helped produce those, and you concur with uh, the assessor's yes, recommendation. Yes, sir. Mr. Welch, you concur with the recommendation? I do. And I do as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just another comment. I suspect that this land, the portion that was in current use, was probably in current use long before Smutty Nose acquired the property. Mm -hmm. oh, and oh, I yeah. think it just kind of illustrates um, one of the benefits of of Smutty Nose um, coming into town, not only from an economic standpoint of jobs or whatever, but also from the standpoint as we now have um, 1.3 million, um, I think that was the number that you said, that is now essentially being taxed uh, an assessed value of 1.3 million that was only several hundred dollars before. Yeah, for those three acres, yeah. the, right. the entire right. property yeah. prices. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, take it to a vote then. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mark, this is mainly in your area, the third item, intergovernmental agreement for cable access with SAU 90. Can it sit here? Yes, please. That's fine. For quite some time, uh, this board has been <coughs> dealing with a uh, request from School Administrative Unit 90 regarding um, allocating some portion of the uh, franchise fees that are received from Comcast and that are in a revolving fund uh, to the Hampton School District. And uh, this board had voted, uh, I believe, back in uh, November to uh, allocate some monies, approximately 13000 to the school district to um, for, for equipment that they had purchased. Um, this would be equipment that was is utilized as part of developing programming right. for the second channel that the town is entitled to under its uh, franchise agreement with Comcast. And so the school administrative unit 90 had requested a more um, firm commitment uh, to uh, share revenues and uh, a, a legal question arose as to whether or not one taxing unit of government mm -hmm. could support another taxing unit of government uh, legally. And so the mechanism to test this is this intermunicipal agreement, which will go to the Attorney General's office for approval. And if within 30 days of receiving this document, the Attorney General's office does not object, 
then they are automatically deemed to have approved it. Uh, getting into the nuts and bolts of the agreement, uh, the agreement recognizes that the selectmen have complete discretion in deciding what amount, if any, to provide to SAU 90. Uh, it is mentioned that this would be for programming and um, can be used for personnel on their part. Uh, but if it is used for equipment, then that equipment would become the property of the town of Hampton, although the school administrative unit would be responsible for ensuring it and keeping an inventory of it. And so um, it also indicates that this board would appoint a school representative to the cable TV advisory committee. I understand that's already occurred. Yeah. And so um, this agreement is uh, an attempt to keep it simple. Uh, nevertheless, it's gone through a number of drafts, um, and uh, this particular draft that is before you this evening is one which I believe uh, satisfies this board's concerns and nevertheless gets the point to the Attorney General's office for uh, okay. ruling. Then if we were to approve this tonight, have the school, has the school board already approved it from their standpoint? It is my understanding that two days from now they would be okay. doing yeah. what you're being asked to do tonight. Uh, this has been a form, this final form has been provided to me by council for the school district which yeah. incorporates all the changes that I've requested in your behalf. Okay, I would make a motion then to approve this um, intergovernmental agreement between the town board of selectmen and the SAU 90. And also, I think your motion, will you want to say, and to submit same once it is signed to the Attorney General's office for approval. Yeah, do you uh, have the text? I thought you had the text. Yeah, the, the text motion. right there. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Yeah. I move to enter into the intermunicipal agreement for cable access facilities and equipment between the Town of Hampton and the Hampton School District, SAU 90, and to submit the same once it is signed by both parties to the New Hampshire Attorney General's office for approval under RSA 53A colon three Roman numeral five. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank okay. you. Um, I had one other item I wanted to bring up under um, old business. Um, there was a road race. We can go Sunday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, I think it was. Uh, one of the ones that right. we approved a month ago, so local sports. And um, I had brought up, because I had one complaint last week, and I just asked out of curiosity, had anybody else had any complaints? I think Mary Louise had indicated that she had. I brought one to Fred. Yeah, had had a, a couple of whatever. And, and looking at that information, the, the, what I think were three complaints in yes. total that we have, all happened to revolve around one particular intersection, that being where um, Woodland Road and, and Little River um, come together or whatever. Yeah. And, um, I did talk to the police chief today and got a pretty good description of what went on. It was not a huge deal. Um, I did have one person call who indicated they were stuck in traffic for 37 minutes and maybe if I was stuck there for 37 minutes yeah. I might have thought it was a, a, a huge deal or, you know, whatever. But it wasn't like there were problems all over town and, and so on and so forth. But the reason I bring it up tonight is, um, if you recall, we approved two half marathons on, on the same night. The second is out into October. And the October marathon um, potentially um, provides uh, an opportunity to have greater inconvenience for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the race this past weekend had 1,200 people. Um, the race um, for October is projecting 5,500 people, and the number of people that running is uh, that are running is one factor that contributes, um, you know, to the inconvenience. So, um, one of the things that I noted this past weekend, and again, I, I don't think it's it's a huge deal for this past weekend. I did not know, other than when we approved it, that the r the race was this past weekend. It didn't show up on the non-emergency notifications. It didn't show up on the website. Um, if there were flyers that were sent out in the mail, I didn't get one, and it does go um, out right in front of, of, of my house, um, you know, on Ocean Boulevard out there. So I'm bringing it up um, just from the standpoint to make sure that as we head into the October race, I think we can really impact um, the inconvenience factor with communication. This particular race um, next October has 
um, seven different streets that are closed. In some cases, it's um, most cases it's showing about an hour. Um, one it's showing an hour and 20 minutes or whatever. So I think I, I just think that going into the October race, we have to make sure that we use the non-emergency notification systems that it's on the website. I, I think we need to make sure that that local sports makes a very wide distribution of mailers um, to let people know. I think we ought to go so far as a couple of days in advance use our portable signs, um, you know, to let people know what's going on. Because if, if you take the case of the people that were inconvenienced this past weekend, I think had they known about that, they would have gone around um, yes. some of those locations, and it wouldn't have can't go around. W wouldn't have, well, depends on who you are. Would not have been as as inconvenient. So what I'm requesting is 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 that we make you know uh, on a scale of one to ten, let's make an effort of ten on the communication piece of of that because I think it can help the um, any dissatisfaction and the um, inconvenience. So I want to add something to that, if I may. Um, I think there should be no question in anyone's mind, but that the law enforcement officer at these intersections during the races has complete total soul discretion over who moves where. <coughs> Never mind the race officials who are very nice people and they're volunteers, but the police officer should have soul total control of what's happening. Number two, there is no excuse, no excuse for having people sit in their cars for half an hour. And some of these intersections, like Little River and Woodland and stuff, it's kind of hard to find a go around unless you want to go up yeah. to Northampton and right. come all the way down. Uh, I, I am tired of the inconvenience that's caused to the public. And there should be every effort made. Um, a nice uh, Officer Del Greco made me stay behind his patrol oh, unit yeah. for about five yeah. minutes. And then as soon as there was an opening, in the October race last year, he said, okay, and just, you know, get through quick and, and go home. Uh, so there's got to be a discretion on the part of the officers, and the traffic cannot be stopped, cannot be stopped for long periods of time. Unacceptable. Uh, before we uh, let the, our town assessor go, uh, Mr. Ed Tinker, I had a couple of questions unrelated to what's on the He's agenda. going to be here for the next item. Okay, you want to... Uh, entertain some questions after that next item then? Yeah, I have a couple. There's actually <laughs> two items, but you yes, can, I You're welcome to ask Thank him you. now, Mike, sure. under old business, if you like. He's very well, brave. I, I don't know if it's old business or new business. I had we a, never do. I had, a, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a taxpayer bring it to my attention that when we were looking at the uh, rebates for the uh, sewage, mm -hmm. okay, that that appeared not to include the long-term debt for those taxpayers. Is that that's correct, that's right? That's correct. I thought it was. Now the next question is, is that because of a statute or something of that sort? It's because of the selectman vote back in I believe eighty one seventy nine or eighty one that they voted to just um, do the rate. I think if you look at the minutes back then it explains Okay. Um, and I, I think I have a copy in my office, but I believe mm -hmm. Mark it, was, it was a selectman's. The selectman, of, yeah, back then it was yeah. 19, I believe, 81, mm -hmm. and it was just the rate yeah. portion associated with the operation of the wastewater okay. treatment. That explains that one. Then the other question he had, same fellow. He moved from one house to another house, <coughs> and he couldn't figure out why the veterans' benefits stayed with the house. Because the house is not a better veteran, he said. No, but it, during the tax year, it stays with the oh, house. The tax year. Yeah. If okay. they move, they're required to refile mm -hmm. a new permanent application. Yeah. Uh, what the statute says, by December 1st. Okay. So that we make sure it gets onto the new property. But, okay. no, those exemptions and credits go with, they are for the people, but they go with the property. For that taxing year. For that taxing yeah, year. Period. Good. Right. That answers that one, too. Yep. Thank you very much. I have a quick question for Ed, too, if I may. Uh, the veterans' exemptions are coming before us now. What about the elderly exemptions? Because I've had a couple of people call saying they're trying to yep. do things, refinance and stuff, and they're kind of waiting on getting well, the It requires a lot of more financial information, yep. and a lot of times it requires, if they file a uh, tax return, we need to review that tax return. Okay. And that it takes time to get those tax returns. Okay. Um, we also require a lot year-end statements mm -hmm. and, and, and asset information mm -hmm. and it's um, 
it's not easy for them right. to get all that in one visit. So we, we're constantly trying to gather all the financials to make sure we make the correct decision. Um, we do have s maybe seven or eight that appear to be complete, but we have an overload of veteran requalifications this year, and we've been trying to get those out of right. the way. Right. But those the the elderly will be coming um, this month. They'll start showing up. Good for your review. Because yeah. I know one individual is trying to refinance and can't until the elderly exemption has cleared. Right. And what, what are the what what is the date or what are the dates that the elderly, blind, and disabled exemptions need to be filed by? Uh, April fifteenth is 15th. the deadline. But because there's so much financial required. Yep. We, we recommend they start early because it takes it can take you know a month or more to. to but either way, the the the, the applicant has until April 15th to submit that Correct. to you. And if somebody yep. submitted something on April 14th or whatever, um, there may be some follow up in terms of clarification mm -hmm. of information and so yeah. on that could take yeah. place on the 16th or 17th well, yeah, or 18th. Sure. But the the application does. Mm -hmm. And is that an application elderly, for example? that, that um, needs to simply be submitted um, initially or is it something that needs to be submitted each year or five years or? Um, we, we can, we, we must requalify them at least once every five years. We can do it as often as one year yeah. if there's a reason to do that. But five years is, is the typical uh, requalification. We're in the middle of that this year. Outside of the first submission, does somebody that's elderly have to proactively do anything within the five-year period, or is that something where we notify people? We notify them. Okay. We notify them. Uh, we've actually now have uh, uh, we track uh, birth dates, so we know when a year's coming to change categories. Let's say from one to two or something. Oh, so we'll actually notify in a letter and a, and a new permanent right. application that that their categories change in. Um, and then when the five years comes up, we notify um, so quite a bit ahead of time that they need to requalify. Right. Yeah. Okay. How about the veterans? Same thing? Same thing. Yeah. Anything else on this? Or? No. Thank you okay. very much. Can we move off old business to new business. Yep. Approval of the lease rental documentation for seawalls, revetments, and stairs. And I think this probably spans um, all three of you guys, Fred and Mark and mm -hmm. Ed, whatever. So. Let the draftee go first. <laughs> 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 um, as, as we know, um, there are a number of properties in town where people have uh, encroached on property of the town in several different ways. Uh, and one way is to, uh, especially on the North Beach area where this was leased land before and the town has sold all these lots. Uh, there, the specific boundary of the lot is uh, the, the seawall and the, the lease, each uh, deed specifically states that the land between uh, the, um, the, the beach area is, is not being sold as part of that and so it's reserved to the town. And so what you have is a situation of town property that in many instances is being utilized for seawalls or revetments, which is a word Fred knows better than I, uh, and or stairways. So in each case you have people occupying town property um, without paying for it. And uh, without paying for it in several respects. First, there is a, an occupancy component that in most cases would be like a tenancy, so you'd be charging rent. And then there's another component, which is the safety component, which uh, we certainly want people to be take responsibility and not leave it on the town for whatever their occupancy entails and, and to ensure against risks that are foreseeable. And so this lease document is intended to accomplish a number of things. It's uh, first of all, it, it constitutes a permission on the part of the selectmen to allow the occupancy of town property that's not needed for public purposes, and to um, confine the occupancy to those areas that you approve. Mm. Uh, the second item is to um, charge a reasonable rent for that, and 
the proposal was that there be a five-year rental period for $500 total, payable all at once, which will cover the expense involved in terms of uh, administering this program, which will involve approximately 60 some properties. You have the 63, I believe it is. And so uh, the second aspect of that, it, it, as it will require those who are entering into such a lease to ensure to, uh, not only to indemnify the town and hold the town, town harmless for any property damage or personal injury, but also to ensure the property at those rates of coverage that we require of people who do work on town property. Um, furthermore, um, when a uh, town property is leased, provided that the lease agreement allows for uh, taxation and, it, and the both sides recognize that we will tax it, the assessor will uh, not only tax the item itself that is involved in uh, the value of the item in, that is on town property, but also the use of the town property itself. The land, that, yeah. the land value. Mm -hmm. So there, he, he's got a lot of work to do oh. in these. Uh, but, the, but first and foremost, this will be coming up very quickly with a number of applications for seawall work mm -hmm. that are coming soon. And so uh, thought was that this document is needed for that framework. Um, And so, uh, Fred, did you have anything to add to that? Other than um, the statute requires that we do this if people are going to occupy town property. Mm -hmm. Good. <coughs> it's, it's specifically the, the legislature a number of years ago amended the statutory requirements so that if uh, a private individual or a corporation or an LLC, any, any, any item other than a governmental item, a uh, governmental entity, uh, occupies municipal property with consent of the selectmen, uh, then they must be taxed on the value of that property and what they put on it. This goes back to a case in Belmont where the state of New Hampshire had purchased a very large tract of property to extend the so-called Laconia Bypass and they purchased all the buildings on it and there were several millions of dollars worth of property taxes that were eliminated because of that but the state let the individuals continue to run their businesses tax-free. When the legislature found out about that, they changed the law. And this is how they changed the law. Uh, so we're obliged to follow it if, if, we're, if we put anybody on town property or allow them to use town property. I have a questions or comments. I have a quick question. Um, when you're talking about the town property and the seawall, the existing concrete seawall, where it, where it, where it actually exists, it, that's the exact line because the rocks for the revetments that are coming in are, are nestling against that existing concrete right. wall. Yeah. So th that wall specifically is a demarcation line for town versus private uh, property. I, I, I don't, I don't think that we know that. I don't think there's any way of answering it's not that. Well, there is a, for most of these lots, there is a recorded plan at the Registry of Deeds, and it's my understanding that the lot line corresponds to the seawall. To yeah. the concrete. To the concrete seawall. Concrete seawall. Yeah. Look, Does the primary area that's coming up, um, where this is all come about, is, is properties that are on Ocean Boulevard, um, from essentially where Brown's Beach is up to the Northampton mm -hmm. line. Yeah. Um, I think that the only place, that, I mean, I walk the dog down there seven days a week. The only place where there is an actual concrete um, seawall is m mainly in the area of Northeast Lane, okay? I, I don't believe It's that behind the rocks, but there is a... Right, but I don't in think there. until the assessor goes out there <coughs> to establish exactly what the uh, town land is and yeah. what the square foot right. that we're necessary yep. that we could necessarily say that that is or isn't yeah. the the line um, but I'm just but what I'm trying to establish is now that some sections of wall have been rebuilt and they've been rebuilt by the use of big blocks of of uh, stone, stone. etc 
does the town then own those revetments? I'm assuming that we own that once no. it's constructed. No. 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 That's that's why the the lease is there. The okay. the encroachments are not owned by us. Nevertheless, they're taking up town property. But they but the encroachments then would be temporary and could be ordered to be removed at such time as the town feels it's no longer appropriate. Yes. To, to lease this area. That's correct. Okay. Okay. I have one more question along this line. I've walked along there several times, not as much as Richard has, but is there a concrete wall all along there? I didn't think oh, there was no. a concrete wall. No. Long long. No. There, is a a there is a curved concrete wall behind. All along there? Be no. well, I don't know how far it, along. They're, no. they're basically, if you want to start out at Ocean Boulevard mm -hmm. at, at Browns Beach, mm -hmm. there are probably, I mean, I'm guessing here, but there are probably 15 or 20 homes um, with Ocean Boulevard addresses before you hit Northeast Lane. Mm -hmm. Northeast right. Lane is essentially a, a road that, that snakes in off of Ocean Boulevard mm -hmm. and then those properties right. end up yeah. being oceanfront up to the Northampton Line. Mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, the only mm -hmm. actual poured concrete seawall mm -hmm. um, that I can think of there is in front of what are probably a half a dozen mm -hmm. properties that are, are northeast lane. There are um, some more to the south of that, Okay, uh, but yeah. not every lot has one. Yeah. Right. Point. And then in a, in a case of a lot mm -hmm. of those, northeast lane is very obvious because there's very little in the way of mm -hmm. riprap in right. front of them, just right. almost a, a token amount where I suspect that if I w I'll look at it, ne you know, next time I'm down there tomorrow, or whatever. But I suspect some of the ones that Fred's referring to that would be down in the area of 1070, 1060 mm -hmm. Ocean Boulevard. The, the walls right. maybe some of them may almost right. they're there, but they're covered with right. with well, they're right. covered. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think either way, I, I think that the point is is property by property. The assessor is mm -hmm. going to, through a measure and, and, and list effort, right. and based on the pl you know the plot plan or whatever, make a determination. He's going to know, for example, this 50 feet of frontage or whatever, mm -hmm. but he's going to have to make a de determination whether that's encroaching by three feet, ten mm -hmm. feet, twelve feet, right. um, or whatever onto town land. There's some of the pictures that have been presented to the planning board, because these people are coming before the planning board too, to yes, for right. the rebuilding of the wall, clearly show the five. It's, I believe it's a five foot con curved concrete wall that is behind and when the ocean dislodges the rocks because they've been used they were using smaller rocks in front of the wall when the ocean dislodges those you can clearly see the there, concrete. There are, and, and Dick is right that there are some properties on the North Beach that have no concrete right. wall at right. all. Those that do um, have been there since the properties many of them since the properties were right. sold and they, and they right. got together as groups of individuals mm -hmm. you remember in 2007 we lost a section of seawall mm -hmm. concrete seawall those folks got yeah. back together again as a group along there mm -hmm. uh, there were five or six yeah. properties involved and they poured a steel reinforced concrete wall right. and then put a revetment in front of it mm -hmm. to, to try right. to keep it from being destroyed by the yeah. waves but I don't think you're going to find when Ed goes through his measure and list exercise that he's just going to assume that a concrete oh, wall, wall represents oh, no. the property yeah. line. Every one of those leased lots had feet and inch measurements from Did the they? boulevard. Oh, okay. And that's where the problem was created because they were leased lots. And when the town decided to sell them, everybody understood that there was a wall in front of the property that protected it because the private owners put those walls out there. But when the, they wrote the agreement to sell the leased lot, it came out in feet and inches, and the markers are typically close to where the revetment is, but it may be a few feet one way or the other. Mm. Right. And, it, and by doing that, it created a private wall on town land. <laughs> I mean, it, that's just the way it was, right. was done. And so that's where we are today is that these, all of these lots have feet and inch measurements from the boulevard and the wall is somewhere close to that, but it may be all on town property. It may be on town property on one end and on private property on the other end. And that's where all of this agreement stuff is coming in because of the way it was done. One of the things that is required here is when you, by ordinance, the the, plan, the, the, uh, the wetlands ordinance the town adopted, right. 
is when they want to put the revetment, that is the stones in front of the walls or in front of the embankments, in front of the cottages or, ho or homes, they have to come in with a plan and they have to show right, where the yeah. town line is. Some of those lines happen to match the top of the wall. Mm -hmm. Some of them do not match yeah. the top of the wall. Yeah. So they're going to have to tell us where that is and whether or not, if there is a wall, whether or not it's on our property or their mm -hmm. property. And the, the assessor must govern themselves accordingly under the statute to assess what is on our property only. Right. When I was walking along there, it looked like to me some of those walls had been replaced at different times by yes. different people. Yeah. Right. They didn't sure. even look like they were straight in a row. They're not. That's why I was asking. They are, they are not. They are not. They're not. Um, it's going to make it a challenge. It okay. is. Um, I've a, Good luck, Ed. <laughs> I, have a couple of, I have a couple of questions and comments, and a lot of it's just, I think I understand, the confirmation. Um, we are going to address all properties, not just properties that come in for wetlands permit right, because right. they're they're looking right. to mm -hmm. um, maintain it or, or add to it or whatever. That's number one. Um, number two is we are doing this for reasons of protecting the town from a liability standpoint as opposed to some sort of a revenue generation, um, you know, yeah, uh, like projects or, or whatever. The, the rent that we're charging, um, $500 a year, which is $500 for, for five years paid up front, essentially $100 a year, right. and there is inspection involved, so I mean, I, I, that looks to me like it's covering our costs, and that rent is going to be the same. Some of these may have 250, maybe occupying 250 feet of, of, of town land. We might find some with 1,000 or 1,500 mm -hmm. square feet. Uh, Ed and I were talking about that today when we went up to Concord. Typically, there's 50 feet of frontage, so right. depending on whether you're coming out 3 feet or yeah. 10 feet or whatever, Yep. But it, it's basically the rent portion is basically a, a, a flat 500 regardless mm -hmm. of, of how much um, footage, you know, space that, yeah. that you're um, occupying. I think because we're doing it from a liability standpoint, I, I think that this has to be done in a timely manner. I mean, it's not all mm -hmm. going to get done in two weeks or whatever. But if, if, if we're looking to protect ourselves from a liability standpoint, you can't take years no, you no. Know, to, no. you know, no. to... to um, to do it. One of the things I observed is this whole project, if you will, is really a, a combination of three documents, one being the lease that, that we're looking at a draft of tonight, which is going to be the, you know, the boilerplate for all of these. The second is the application um, associated with it. And then third is the document we, which we approved a couple of months ago, um, selectments, regulations, seawalls, revetments, and stairs on town property. So it's kind of a um, combination of, of the three. A um, couple of, of questions or, or maybe suggestions or whatever. On the application piece, Fred, I sure. wonder if somewhere on that we, we've established some time frames other than emergencies where you can do work. In other words, I, yes. I think what we said was like September 15th to May yeah. 15th or something like that. I wonder if that shouldn't be included it should. on we the application. We didn't prepare this, but it was a draft and the conservation helped us with it. Right, but I'm, I'm just suggesting yes, that, 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 you know, yes. so somebody right. can see that right away yeah. um, or whatever. This um, application then is going to be required for existing structures, people that have absolutely no intention over the next several mm -hmm. years of doing yep. anything. This is not, this application not, so somehow in the next whatever it is, several weeks or a month or whatever, we're going to get a letter out to all of the properties that we believe are have, right. have walls or revetments riprap on town property and whatever so they um, know what they have to do. Um, one of the concerns that, that I have, and this is more looking at the application, is I wouldn't want to make this um, too tough on people and I guess what I'm getting is like for example in the application it says if an engineering plan is necessary the plan should be dated and whatever and I would I would hope for the most part that for, for, for walls that are there nobody is applying to do anything with them or whatever that people would not have to go out and get any sort of engineering plan. To That's not the plan uh, if they come in and they want to tear the wall down or right. rebuild one then they right. need some engineering plan to go right. with it to show it. Right, right. But for, for the ones that are basically just there and there's no reason to believe that there's any sort of a problem then. No. Okay. Um, let's see, I have a few others. There's that. Um, 
in the selectmen's regulations, it says it is to be understood that the applicant cannot exclude the public from any portions located on Tom property of any seawall, revetment, so on and so forth. And then it goes on to say, um, without the prior written consent of the selectmen of the town of Hampton, does this lease, once it's completed, represent that written consent then? Yes. yes. Okay. So it, at first it looked a little ambiguous to me, but if the lease is the... Mm -hmm. and written, unless you decide otherwise as a board in, right. in some special circumstance. Oh. Right, right. Okay. And um, finally, Mike, one of the things that Mike had pointed out is, is that um, these walls, whether they're riprap walls or whatever, all don't line up um, nicely in right, some right. cases, they're very different, four or mm -hmm. five feet or whatever. Um, can I assume that that requirement to line up is, is not going to be enforced for seawalls that are there and there's no proposal to change them or whatever? No, it won't be because in order to do that, you've got to come back. You have to reposition the wall. In order to do oh, that, yeah. you need to get a special permit mm -hmm. through right. that process with the Planning Board and Conservation Commission. Yeah. That's not our intention. Yeah. If, if you're going to come in and redo your wall, then we want it to line up generally with the walls on either yeah. side so that yeah. the, the ocean can't undertow the wall and mm -hmm. pull out the three walls all together. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the proposition here. Mm -hmm. So the Conservation Commission has been very careful about that and how they arrange their permits so that won't happen. Mm -hmm. And that's really not a function that we're going through. Mm -hmm. They've already done that. They have a permit to do it in that fashion. Mm -hmm. We're just going to give them, a, uh, when they come in for their permit from the board, and you have your meeting with them, your hearing, we're going to uh, give them a, a series of uh, conditions. And that would be one of the conditions that they have to do, which was voted by the Conservation and Planning Board mm -hmm. and approved by the selectmen. So for somebody that comes forward with an application um, that is not looking to do anything different than is already there, they are not going to be required to no. do anything, to no. line it up or whatever. Only, only if they're actually coming in with a special permit to redo the wall. Right, right. Okay. M Mr. Chairman, you will find, I think, though, where the new configurations are actually blo shaped blocks Yes. That right. that's going to be more effective against the waves, and when you have individuals who still have the riprap, which really gets moved around a lot when you have heavy seas, not only themselves but the neighbors may start ending up by complaining because the water damage can be significant along there. So you may start seeing people who have the older form of riprap coming in, oh. just because of what nature is doing to that. We uh, have area. 16 applications that are on the, in the process or have just completed the process right. for changing seawalls. Yep. 16 through 32 Norris Lane, Lane. Uh -huh. is yep. one group and they're right. going to use cut granite blocks, very large ones. Right, right. But they're the only ones. Everybody else is well, going to use large uh, I think a lot of that, Mike, I think knows this better than I, but I think a lot of that is it just happens that the contractor that's doing that work happens to have that right. material yeah, he does, available, right. I suspect. Yeah on a long-term basis, that material is not as readily available as just the, the regular old riprap. It should be a lot. It should be a lot sturdier and, and give it a little better protection. Does it say anything in there, and my brain doesn't remember, though? You, you mentioned the right of the public to access, but remember our discussion on railings? There, there is a requirement for railings. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just... Um, There's a requirement for protection. Right. And, and again, <coughs> the combination of the lease <coughs> procedures, the public no longer has the right because the, um, you know, the, the property owner is leasing the land from us. No different than a property so owner. Okay. The 33 lease slots that right. we had, you know, that we have down on the beach or okay. whatever, and the leaded streets that still exist. Um, I, I did want to say, Mr. Chairman, I know that people have the idea that because they've got something that's been there for a number of years, that it is so-called grandfather. <laughs> That is not the case. Yeah. The occupancy of town property is is uh, at sufferance, not <coughs> as of right. But no squatters' rights. Correct. Um, <laughs> one thing that's also in there, and this is actually in the regulations we approved, is annual inspections. And my question: Who, who would be doing that? Building department? It'll be a combination of building and uh, conservation. Okay. And public works. Mm. Okay. And just out of curiosity. Um, and, and I think we're covering our costs from that with the, with the $500 rental mm -hmm. or whatever. But, I mean, we don't do any, so we've, we've still got 33 lots of lease land down on the beach in different locations, lettered streets That's or whatever. Right. I, I would assume we do no 
annual inspections of, of those. What is causing us to feel that an annual inspection is, is I mean, I'm, we're just adding to the workload of those departments, and I'm just curious why. We, these walls can shift. Okay. We have some that were recently built down there that have, in fact, shifted. Yep. They're now okay. dangerous. Oh, yep. yeah. We want to make sure that doesn't okay. happen. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want some sort of a motion or whatever, just a consensus that the draft looks good and we'd only actually be approving an actual lease when you come forward? I, I just wanted to uh, confirm, Fred, that uh, Mary Louise had raised a, the question about the railing, and I, I'm not seeing that right away. Do we, do we recall where we put that in? I don't recall, but I, I know that we put some additional language in that dealt with... Um, on uh, page, it's in the um, selectman's regulations. Uh, pages should be numbered. They're not at the moment, but it's the third page in. Um, item four is stairs are to be constructed or placed in, on, over, or through the seawall for beach access. They must be shown on the plan in detail, including any detail showing stairs designed for removal during storms or the non summer season. All stairways must contain provisions for safety, and handrails must be OSHA compliant. So. But is that is that binding in the selectman's um, regulations vis-a-vis -vis the draft of the lease? It's it's going to be binding because you're going to give terms and conditions. Right. Okay. That's why I say it's all three of these documents. Takes all three of them. Okay. Good. You want simply want at this point just a consensus that we? I mean, to me, we're not approved. This is just a draft. that's Correct. boilerplate. Um, right. So if you've got a consensus, yeah. then yeah. I would assume that. This would be the basis for the first one that yeah. comes forward. It's fine Any? with me. Okay. Thank you. Very good. You probably uh, have a set of those within a couple of weeks. Good. Okay. good. Right. We have to give publication notice. I, I I think that we ought to just I don't know how much work's involved in priorities or whatever, but I really think that we ought to strive to. Um, you know, try and get these done before we get into the summer oh, I agree. months. Absolutely. You know, because of the liability, yep. and and I also think. Um, you know, you don't have to answer tonight, but I th also think that this whole issue may go, I don't know that, but may go beyond just the geographical area we're talking about now being from Browns Beach to the North mm -hmm. Hampton line, okay? Oh, right. I, I, you know, just off the top of my head, I can't think of anything in the area of Beach Plum and all that. I think we know that town land isn't involved in the, the properties um, from the two ancient highway area up to where we hit the state land. Right. For how you know. so they, they own the little watermark. Right. right. But there may even be some situations in Sun Valley. I don't know. But there, there may are. be, yet, you know, where this applies. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, it's not just limited to this Good. one area. It's anywhere right. it's where there are seawalls, sir, yeah. on town. Right. Right. Okay. Um, next item under new business, supplemental real, tax, real estate tax warrant, PNM railways in the amount of $5,624. Ed, did you want to say something uh, to that? Just that this property is the rail line or the former rail line that runs north to south to the 101 Route 1 interchange, Drakeside Road area. Um, RSA 83.3 is clear that once a rail line is not used for its purpose, um, the real estate becomes taxable. Um, this is the property I believe the state has been negotiating to purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't happened yet. Um, so for that reason, I um, felt that a supplemental warrant for the 2013 tax was, you know, was, was in the right thing to do. Good. I will make a motion to approve the 2014-02 um, supplemental real estate property tax warrant in the amount of $5,624 um, related to Pan Am Railways listed as map 999, lot 20. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have one other item I just want to bring up under old business. We received a memo a week, two weeks ago from Jones and Beach relative to the naming uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. of a road down in a Dalton Woods subdivision. <coughs> I think when we talked about this last week, I think Fred indicated that the um, names um, of the streets had been confirmed as, as yes, sir. compliant with what we had agreed to in the past, which I think we said Phil was the King Philip Board, yes, um, whatever. So just all I wish to say is just I intend to put this on next week's agenda. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Any other new business? Okay, consent agenda. 
See, there are two items on the consent agenda, the first of which relates to a number of veterans um, exemptions, um, the second of which relates to amendments to the personnel policy, and all of the items are, this is the reason it's on the consent agenda as opposed to Wanda being here, these are items that have all been discussed in the past, and, and it's just a matter of documenting them in the personnel policy, and I think what I think Wanda's really doing a, a good job of, of, of keeping up with this. We went... We went six or seven years. We went from January 2004 without doing one update to the personnel policy until we did a major update at the end of 2011. And Wanda's updated this must be six, seven, eight times at this mm -hmm. point. So mm -hmm. now there's a document that you can go to. It's credible, and right. and you know a department head or whatever can can mm -hmm. see what the rules are and know that right. they're kept up to date. So I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Any closing comments? Yes, I think it's time to go home. Okay, I will make a motion <laughs> to go into a non. Oh God. Making a motion to go into a non-public meeting under RSA 91. A colon three Roman numeral two small c roll call vote required. All in favor? I will second that. Seconded by Mary Louise. Unanimous. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. At eight eighteen. And we have two motions to adjourn. Yeah. I, mean, oh, I, I made a motion. You, were, you second. Were, were you making it? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I'll second that. I thought second. you said both. All, all, do it. all in favor? We're adjourned.